Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, July 28th, 2020. My name is Karen Bodenschatz, and I serve as Associate Pastor at First Lutheran Church in Onalaska, Wisconsin. And today is my birthday. I am typically reflective around this time of year as the anniversary of my birth rolls around. It seems like a, a good idea to think about the past year or even years and ponder what I want to do, be, ponder, learn the next year. So this year, that reflection has had an added depth to it for three reasons. The pandemic, the unrest in our country, and I am now 49 years old. There's something about being a year away from half a century old, wow, that has caused me to be a bit more reflective than usual. And then throw in the pandemic and the civil unrest and you know, there you go. When I turned 30, I moved across the country from California to Pennsylvania, leaving behind all my family and friends and everything I had ever known to go to seminary. Many of you have heard me talk about how transformative that time was for me. My whole understanding of God and therefore myself and my world changed. I often say I was turned inside out and upside down during seminary. And I am so deeply grateful now <laughs> for that time, but it was not easy. It took years with a therapist and a spiritual director to kind of put myself back together with God. But I would not trade that time for anything. And I'm so grateful for the people God put in my life at that time to walk with me as my world shifted. Um, my professors, my classmates, my friends all walked alongside me with patience and wisdom. But also deeply influential during that time was this guy named Martin Luther, <laughs> a long dead fellow follower of Jesus whose life was also turned upside down by God. And despite me being a lifelong Lutheran, I didn't know that what it meant to be a Lutheran. Like, I don't think I really understood what Luther was talking about until I got to seminary. There were just too many competing narratives as I was growing up. So reading what Luther and the other reformers wrote, learning their stories began to change how I think and how I understand this amazing God we have. Having one of the world's most influential scholars on the Reformation was not too bad either. <laughs> so now, as I get closer to turning 50, I find myself in a similar situation. I can feel the shift that is happening in me as my thinking and my understanding of myself and my world shifts drastically once again. What isn't necessarily happening like then is a deep shift in my understanding of God. The church maybe, but not God. And that's mostly because this shift in me and my own self is grounded in my understanding of who God is and my understanding of the commands to love God and love neighbor that Jesus gives us. This shift has also come about more slowly, or at least it feels that way, or perhaps I'm just a better thinker now. Um, the past 10 years, I've been making my way here as I study human nature and work on my own self-understanding. I am, as I was then, thankful for the people who journey with me and have been so patient and kind as I move myself into a new way of thinking. And just like when I was 30, there is a writer and a fellow human being who has been key to moving me along. This author is fairly new to me, but in the midst of the unrest that we have experienced here in this country in the last few months, his voice 
has been a guiding light. He pushes my thinking. Dr. Ibram Kendi is his name. You've heard me refer to him before. He is a scholar who is also a gifted writer, and most importantly, he is deeply human, just like me. And I've been listening to and reading his book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. And what I appreciate so much is that he weaves in his story into these new to me concepts around racism and anti-racism. There's something about this weaving that not only draws me in, but gives me another perspective to consider as my own thinking shifts and moves. Recently, I was listening to a chapter on biological racism, which is the idea that the races are biologically different and that those differences then create a hierarchy of value. We know as postmodern human beings that there is no difference biologically from me, a white woman, than Dr. Kendi, a black man, any more than there is no biological difference between myself with curly brown hair, now grain, and my best friend with her straight blonde, also now grain, hair. And while it may mean there is a different gene that dictates our skin color or our hair color or our height. Biologically, we are all the same race. That those differences that we see in each other only make up 1% of our overall makeup as human beings. And yet for centuries, the theory has been accepted that our differences are more than skin deep which then opens the door to things like segregation or even before that enslavement or a false sense of superiority and a whole host of problems that we are now trying to untangle. Dr. Kendi then masterfully takes, to the, takes me to the space where we begin to question the stereotypes we hold of other ethnic groups based on this idea that then fails to see the individual and only sees the person for their color of their skin or the way that their hair is. I quote him, to be an anti-racist is to recognize that there is no such thing as white blood or black disease or natural Latinx athleticism. To be an anti-racist is to also recognize the living, breathing reality of this racial mirage, which makes our skin colors more meaningful than our individuality. To be an anti-racist is to focus on ending the racism that shapes the mirages, not to ignore the mirages that shape people's lives. I have known or at least suspected for quite a while that the categories of race we are so used to perpetuates the idea that we are somehow innately different from other people instead of people whose roots come from different parts of the world. They were all human beings, we're all people. I, here in the Midwest, live with the reality that I am an Irish German American deep in Norwegian American territory. What I don't live with is my ethnic heritage easily spotted and used to others' advantage. The few times that that has happened was not pleasant. It was hurtful. Dr. Kendi is helping me to realize that those few times for me is every day for others and moves beyond hurt feelings to a whole system built to disadvantage. A shift is happening in me on this, the 40, 49th anniversary of my birth. What it will lead to is anyone's guess. I am sure at some point beyond the 50th anniversary of my birth, I'll have some answers to that for now. I'm grateful for the wisdom of Dr. Ibram Kendi and others who walk with me along the way, including you. Yes, you. Which brings me to an invitation. In case you haven't seen it on Facebook, we are having a drive through birthday gathering today at my home from four to six, because my extroverted self 
who loves people is dying a little bit and would love to see and interact with people in a way that makes sense during a pandemic. And this is how we do that. In the age of COVID, you drive by my house and wave. Um, check out our Facebook page for my address or message me. Come by, say hello. Feel free to chat for a few minutes while socially distanced. I will be wearing a mask and appreciate when others do too. And for your kindness, I've made cookies for you, not for me. I'm getting a cake. So thank you, dear ones, for the ways we walk together as we deepen our understanding of God and ourselves and the world. May you be as blessed as I am in our journey.